Hi, this screencast is going to talk about marginal costs, the relationship of marginal and average. You're going to um, have a little bit on diminishing returns, and then also you're going to see here quite a few formulas. I hope that throughout this unit that you're writing down your formulas and you're keeping them all together because they're really important when you're being able to answer different multiple choice and FRQs. So one of the first things that I wanted to make sure that we're all aware of is the definition for marginal. And marginal means additional unit of. So in this case here, when we're talking about marginal cost, we're talking about the additional cost from producing one more unit of output. If we're looking at the formula that goes with it, we're looking at the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. In most cases, your quantity is going to change in increments of one, and so you just need to subtract the total cost from one unit to the next. However, you should always make sure of this when you're given a chart or you're given numbers, because if the quantity changes in increments of two, for example, you would have to look at the change in the total cost, but you then would also have to divide it by two. Um, when we talk about total cost, we're talking about the summation of fixed costs and variable costs. Remember that fixed costs do not, are not dependent upon output. They are constant no matter if you produce zero units of a good or you produce hundred units of a good. Um, the most common examples are rent or insurance that a company pays. These uh, costs are not dependent upon how much is being produced. Variable costs, on the other hand, are dependent upon output. They increase as output increases. Most common examples would be raw materials, wages, electricity. These different things all change depending upon how much is being produced. If you're going to keep the shop open for more hours, then that means you're going to run the machines longer, you're going to have the lights on, and so your electricity is going to increase as your output is increasing. If you're going to hire more people or have people work longer hours, then your wages are going to go up as your output is increasing. Um, you want to make sure that you remember how to calculate average. Average is the total divided by the quantity. If you're looking here at this average cost curve, the average variable cost curve is determined by taking the total variable cost and dividing it by the quantity. Um, we'll also have the ATC curve, and that's another one. And in that case, you're taking the total cost and dividing it by the quantity. So in a chart, you could be given some information, but not all. But with these two formulas here, you're able then to be able to um, answer really anything that they ask. Another one, though, that you could get here is that you could figure out total variable cost by looking at average variable cost times quantity. That's another formula that you would need to know. So one of the things that I want to make sure that you understand is diminishing marginal returns. This is a really important term, and you want to be able to know the definition, be able to see it in a chart of numbers, and then also be able to recognize it on a graph. So when we talk about it here with diminishing marginal returns, we're saying that with all of their inputs held constant except for one variable input, output increases at a decreasing rate. This is a short run analysis because you can only change one variable input. Um, usually it's labor or it would be the capital. So with the addition of one more worker, output is increasing at a decreasing rate. So your total product or your total output is going up with this additional worker, but the rate of return from that worker is not as large as what it was when you had hired the person before that. Um, when we're looking at it with regard to the marginal cost curve, diminishing returns is the upward part of the marginal cost curve. All decision making happens in this upward part of the marginal cost curve. The diminishing returns for the average variable cost is this upward portion of the ABC. And so anytime that you have an upward sloping part of these curves, and they're all U-shaped, any cost curve, um, you're going to see here that that this part is the diminishing returns, which means that the downward sloping part is the increasing returns. And that just means that as quantity is going up, the um, costs are going down. They're going at a faster rate. And so with that, um, that's like really a good thing, right? Because I'm producing more, but per unit here, the cost is going down. 
Um, the next thing to look at would be the relationship between marginal and average. You can see over here I put that if marginal cost is less than average variable cost, then the AVC will fall. And so that's displayed over here where you have your marginal cost curve that is less than your average. And so it's pulling the average down. Think of it like if you were talking about your GPA. Your GPA would be the average, and the marginal could be this class. So for AP Micro, if you have a grade that you're getting that is less than your cumulative or your average GPA, one, don't stress because the class isn't over and you have plenty of time to, to get your grade up, but if you were looking at that grade, it would be bringing down your average. But once you get to this point over here where you have the marginal that is greater than the average variable cost, that's then when the average will rise. So again, going back to your grades, if in this class you get a higher grade than what your cumulative is, then that's going to pull your cumulative up. And so sometimes it helps to be able to put it in a frame of reference when you're thinking about it. But this relationship between marginal and average is really important. And the last thing to recognize here is where you have the marginal equaling the average. If um, the marginal cost curve equals the average variable cost curve, then the AVC is at a minimum. And this is uh, really important to recognize with any average cost curve. So what we have here is that the average cost is going down, it's going down because the marginal is lower, and then at this point here, you now start to have the marginal becoming higher, and as a result, it's pulling up that AVC. This is where the U-shape starts to happen, and so that's why this is where you have diminishing returns setting in for the average variable cost curve. And remember, diminishing returns is over here on the marginal cost curve. One of the last things then to recognize is that if this is minimum AVC, if we were talking about the average total cost curve, when you look at the intersection of the marginal cost curve and the average total cost curve, that is giving you minimum ATC, which another way of saying that would be producing goods as cheaply as possible. And that is what one of our definitions is for productive efficiency. And so when you see that intersection on a marginal cost curve and an average total cost curve where they're meeting, that means that ATC is at a minimum, and that is also known as productive efficiency. Productive and allocative efficiency are really important. Remember, allocative um, efficiency is producing what society wants or producing that right mix of goods. And these two themes are prevalent in all of the units that we're looking at. So it's really important to be able to recognize it on the graph.